Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Samantha Taberamo Anans. So, have you ever wondered why are you experiencing your periods twice a month? I got you, I got you. So don't worry, this could be a little bit confusing and alarming, I know, but you're not alone. In today's video, we are going to discuss some of the reasons that could be causing this. It could be hormonal imbalance, stress, or any other health factors. We are going to try and break it down for you, so let's dive into it. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future or upcoming videos. And if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave any comments in the comment section. I will reply to them. So let's start with the frequent periods. Let us start with the short menstrual cycle. We all know that the range of the menstrual cycle is between 21 to 35 days. The average is 28 days. And let me explain this in depth. Let me look at the cycle length. People with 21 days are roughly going to have their periods twice in a month. Let me explain this. You know months that have 30 and 31 days? For example, if you're beginning your period at the beginning of the, of the month or the beginning of the week of that month, um, roughly, you're going to again have your period, again like in the third quarter. Let me use an example of um, July. If you're having your period on the 1st of July, and let me say you you have um, you have your periods from, for four days or five days, so you're going to have your periods first and maybe four, fourth or fifth. Then again, you may, you're most likely to have again your periods on the 22nd of July up to the 24th of that same month. So you're getting what I mean. You're going to have your periods in the first week, but also in the third week of that month, you're also again going to have your periods. So hence, this person made a 21-day cycle is having two periods in a single month. My next point is the hormonal imbalance. This is the most common cause of frequent periods because it affects the menstrual cycle. Before I even get into explaining how these hormones affect or bring about the frequent periods, you have to know which hormones even cause what or what are their importance. So in the um, in the hormonal imbalance, you have to know what the estrogen, the progesterone, the luteinizing hormones, thyroid hormones, and what the prolactin hormones do. The estrogen is the one that promotes the growth of the uterine lining. The progesterone is the one that stabilizes and maintains the uterine lining. The follicle stimulating hormone is the one that stimulates the ovary to produce the eggs. Luteinizing hormone is the one that triggers ovulation to release the eggs from the ovary. Then the thyroid hormone is the one that regulates metabolism. Then we have the prolactin hormone. This one normally affects the menstrual cycle when it is elevated. And it is normally associated with the thyroid and the pituitary disorders. So now let me explain to you how the hormonal imbalance brings about the frequent periods or how a person gets two periods in a month. You have to look at the balance between the estrogen and the progesterone. We have already said that the estrogen is the one that promotes growth of the uterine lining and the progesterone is the one that <clears throat> stabilizes and maintains the uterine lining. So if there are higher levels of the estrogen levels relative to the progesterone levels, the uterine lining is going to grow thicker quickly. When it grows quicker, quickly, it's going to bring about the frequent the frequent shedding if the progesterone levels are lower. Because remember that the progesterone level, the progesterone is the one supposed to uh, maintain and stabilize the uterine lining. But if the levels are lower and the estrogen levels are higher, this uterine lining is going to grow thicker and therefore it's going to prematurely shed off if the hormones are not well balanced out. So you have to make sure that there is no imbalance between two of these hormones because if that imbalance happens, that is where you're going to experience the two periods or the frequent periods. Another point is stress. When you're extremely stressed about um, anything, there, there are always rare chances that you get your menstruation. If anything is stressing a woman, it definitely regulates their menstrual cycle. And when we look at stress, it is another factor because it causes an impact on the hypothalamus, which regulates our menstrual cycle. How? Stress activates the hypothalamic pituitary adeno axis, leading to the release of a stress hormone called cortisol. Then the cortisol interferes with the hypothalamus. And remember that the hypothalamus, when it's interfered with, definitely it's going to regulate the menstrual cycle. What I can advise you is when you're having stress, learn to 
walk away from it learn to give yourself a break if you're working in a hospital and you're experiencing a burnout learn to step away from it learn to take a day maybe off take care of yourself love yourself first take care of yourself first do some exercises they help um, to relax the body do some yoga um sleep then there is hydration learn to take enough water time management learn to manage your time stress comes about when you have a lot of things and you do not know how to manage them all so you're stressed about what have i done what have i done so learn to manage your time accordingly a balance that is also very very important another point are the medication or the drugs that we take for example drugs that are used for the thyroid disorders psychotic um disorders those ones that are used in mental health and those other hormonal contraceptives affect hormonal levels therefore causing the irregular bleeding i'm going to talk about the hormonal contraceptives for example the birth control pills the injectables the implants the patches the rings the iud's all these ones cause irregular bleeding especially when you're starting them changing them or stopping them now have you noticed that when you're starting a new family planning method there is a way that your body is trying to adjust to it no man is going to tell you that they started a family planning method and their body just continued on like everything is fine she's not there most of them are going to report heavy bleeding they're going to report um irregular bleeding they may bleed twice in a month or not even not at all so you have to note that sometimes starting a birth control pill is going to bring about sometimes irregular bleeding there are also going to be hormonal fluctuations when you're changing from one family planning method to another because again you're going to pl you're playing around with the hormones in your body so there's going to be hormonal fluctuations and this is going to cause irregular bleeding then missing doses of your birth control pill or not adhering to your schedule of the patches or maybe the rings can lead to a drop in the hormonal levels and when there is a drop in the hormonal levels it's going to lead to the breakthrough bleeding so that is why you're going to see blood there, blood there, leading to the frequent periods because there is going to be a drop in the hormones. Then also discontinuing your hormonal birth control can lead to a temporary imbalance of the hormones. You have noticed, ladies, that when you stop your hormonal birth control methods, you normally have that um, irregular bleeding or frequent bleeding. And this may take a few cycles to get back into normal to regulate itself, but which to regulate itself which normally it does but before that you're going to experience the frequent bleeding or the two periods or nothing in a month but mainly this one brings about the what the irregular bleeding then there is also switching from one family planning method to another this should be made after getting proper consultation or visiting the hospital and getting good advice before you switch from one family planning method to another i've, I've seen ladies who do it because their friends are telling them, me, my IUD is working. So she's on maybe injectables and she switches from the injectables to the IUD. And some are like, me, my condoms do for me and my partner. We do not know the communication that they have. We all know that men are not so good when it comes to family planning. They don't want to hear anything about it. It is the women that take the initiative and they're like, okay, I'm going to stress my kids here and here and here. Of course, I'm not going to say that all men are the same. No, there are some men that are really, really supportive. Especially you've seen some antenatal visits that are men that actually come with their wives. Not all, but there are some good men out there. So what I'm saying is switching from one family planning method to another is going to bring about hormonal fluctuations. So you shouldn't do that unless you have got proper medical advice because this brings about irregular bleeding or the frequent periods. Another point is premenopause, the transition before menopause. And this one normally occurs in women who are in their 40s or 50s. This one also causes irregular bleeding. And here we talk about the hormones. Periods where ovulation is not common are now becoming many. And when there is no ovulation, there's going to be an imbalance between two hormones. That is the estrogen and the progesterone. And remember here that the estrogen is going to be sparking high and dropping suddenly. And when that is happening, you have to think about the progesterone. Remember that these two sex hormones move together. And if, if there is an imbalance in one, you just know that the other one is going to follow suit and there's going to be that fluctuation. So remember the, the explanation I gave you at the beginning. 
when the estrogen levels are high and the progesterone levels are low, the uterine lining is going to thicken very, very quickly. And when it thickens quickly and the progesterone, the progesterone levels are low, which is the hormone that is supposed to stabilize and maintain the uterine lining, it's going to prematurely shed. And when it prematurely sheds, it's going to bring about the irregular bleeding or the frequent periods. Our next point are the thyroid disorders. Thyroid dysfunction can regulate menstrual regularity. The thyroid gland is located in the neck. We all know that. And it produces hormones that regulate metabolism, but also impact various body functions, including the menstrual cycle. So there are two thyroid disorders that affect the menstrual cycle. There is the hyperthyroidism and the hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is where there are high thyroid hormone levels. And hypothyroidism is where there are low thyroid hormone levels. For example, the T4 and the T3. Another point is the polycystic ovary syndrome. This is a common hormonal disorder in women of the reproductive age. And it is normally characterized by hormonal imbalance. So here there is elevated levels of the androgens. These are the male hormones. And then there is ovarian dysfunction. Here there is irregular ovulation or lack of ovulation. And then there is also polycystic cyst on the ovaries. So here there is going to be multiple cysts. That are visible on the ovaries and these ones are normally seen or are visible on the ultrasound so high levels of the androgens tip, we can talk about the testosterone and the insulin resistance normally disrupt the menstrual cycle and when the menstrual cycle is disrupted by these two it's going to make the menstrual cycle shorter and when the menstrual cycles are shorter i already explained it at the beginning you're going to have frequent periods or two periods in a month Uterine fibroids are also another cause of frequent periods. Uterine fibroids are non-cancerous tumors that grow in or on the uterus. So how do they cause the frequent periods? Number one, fibroids disrupt the normal hormonal balance, leading to irregularities in the menstrual cycle. When I talk about hormonal balance, we all know I'm talking about the estrogen and the progesterone, which I've already explained over and over. Again. Another thing is that the fibroids enlarge the surface area of the endometrium. And when the surface area of the endometrium is enlarged, you're going to expect more bleeding of the endometrial lining, which causes, of course, more frequent periods and irregular bleeding. And all the above were some of the causes of frequent periods or why someone has two periods in a month. Now, how do you diagnose this? For example, when you, when you go to the hospital, how do they diagnose this? The first thing I always say, this is history taking. When you go to the hospital, history taking is very, very important. Here, they'll assess the symptoms and the overall health of the, of the patient, the lady, the mother, whoever has come. Then another thing is the blood test. Of course, here we are going to look at the levels of the estrogen, the progesterone, the follicle-stimulating hormone, the luteinizing hormone, or any other relevant hormones that can help us know what is happening. Why is the person getting two periods in a month? Then the last one I'm talking about is the ultrasound. This one particularly can help us to see the fibroids or the ovarian cysts. Treatment can be according to the cause because all the above, the polycystic ovary syndrome, the stress, the hormonal imbalances, all that, they have different management. But um, treatment, we can start with the hormone um, therapy. Hormone therapy, we have seen um, birth control pills or hormonal contraceptives do miracles in these situations. Then we have also seen um, thyroid therapy in cases where thyroid imbalances is the issue. Then there is also a lifestyle. Lifestyle sells a lot of things, guys. People are so sick. And now they think that because they have a little bit of money, the hospital can solve everything. People lifestyle says a lot of things. The way what you're taking to, what you're taking every day matters. It is the only way we are going to fight diabetes, the only way we are going to fight hypertension, the only way we are going to fight so many conditions. So lifestyle matters, whatever you're eating, stay hydrated, have a balanced diet, exercise, have enough sleep, all these things help you health-wise. Another thing is the frequent periods, as we have discussed above, are caused due to various conditions. So the best advice I can give you that if you're experiencing this problem, visit the hospital immediately and talk to your healthcare provider and find the right 
medication for you, the right management for you. Because what, what works for me may not work for you. So that is the best advice I can give you. But otherwise, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with whoever may find this information helpful. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, see you in my next.